another math question, and this one I'm particularly excited about because it involves <laughs> donuts. Uh, a box of donuts contains four glazed, three cream filled, and two jelly donuts. What is the probability of getting a cream filled donut and then getting a glazed donut? Do you want to take it? Yeah, I can, I can take this one. I'm just kind of playing around with it, thinking of some explanations, but it's up to you. Sure, I'll take it. And then okay. if you want to add anything, sure. that way I'm not just sitting here uh, watching you answer questions. True, that's right. true. Need to put just you a pretty face, you yeah. know. <laughs> um, and I think you were making a tree, so I was thinking. I, I was thinking about it just to have a visual for it. It's okay. not really. Yeah. Sorry, Darren, can you actually throw that back up there? Because I didn't grab all that. Find it really quick. There we Maybe go. I should have copied it on my screen. So it's. Uh, a uh, box of glazed. donuts contains four glazed, yeah, three cream-filled, and two jelly donuts. Three, I'll just call it three cream. And two jelly. Two jelly. What is the probability of getting a cream-filled donut and then getting a glazed donut? So we want a cream-filled, then jelly. So this is just a probability question. Um, so what we're going to be looking at is uh, this kind of formula, and we're going to do this a couple times. But we're looking for a, let's see, what do you call it? The outcome you're looking for? Um, favorable. Favorable outcome. I know. I always, I always have trouble with that, too. I know. I'm just like, I know it's, want. yeah, what you want on the top right. and then on the bottom, possible outcomes. Total but bottle, I can never right. think of that word favorable for some reason. I know. So we're looking at our favorable outcomes. So in this case, a favorable outcome in the first, like you grab this random donut, a uh, favorable outcome for you would be that that, that, that is a cream-filled donut. So that's what we're looking for. That's what you're looking for. And then the next favorable outcome would be that you pull out a jelly donut. Um, and then we need to take this and divide it by the number of possible outcomes. All right, now this is important uh, to note that the order matters here. They said they want to grab a cream filled, and then the very next one they want a jelly donut. Maybe it's some sort of weird diet restriction where you have to eat a cream filled donut, and then a jelly donut, but the order is really important right here. Um, so, uh, and that's going to be important because if we said jelly, then cream filled, or just those two, when you pull two, then that, it's a slightly different um, calculation. So when we look at, first of all, we want to look at the probability that you're going to pull a cream filled donut in yellow here. So what we do is we look here, how many cream filled donuts do I have? Well, we have three. So the number of favorable outcomes is going to be three, and the number of possible outcomes is really just adding these up. So how many possible donuts can we pull? We have seven, nine donuts. So we have a one out of three probability of pulling a cream filled donut first. And we have to pull that, otherwise we're not going to get this combination. Um, now we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to say we want a jelly donut next. Um, and there is a little bit of a trick here. We're still doing our favorable outcomes, so I'm going to write that this is cream. Oops. Over here, and then highlight this in yellow just so you remember that. And then we want our jelly donuts. So we're going to look here. We have two jelly donuts. So that's our favorable outcome. Uh, but this is kind of the trick. If you already pulled a cream donut, I'm assuming, hopefully you're not eating half of it and then putting it back. Uh, that, that donut's <laughs> gone, right? So instead of two out of nine, we only have uh, eight possible outcomes. So I can reduce this and say we have a one out of four probability of pulling that jelly donut next. And then, this is where you probably have a better way to explain this um, since you taught probability before, right? Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to take these numbers we have a one-third probability of the first event. And so one out of three times you're going to pull that, but then one out of four times only you're going to get that second event. So we just multiply it here and get one out of 12. So you have a yeah. one out of 12 chance of getting a cream and then a jelly donut in that mm -hmm. particular order. 
So the question is really like, well, why do you multiply them? Mm -hmm. um, I, that's where I was trying to draw the tree. the tree. But the tree, because there are so many different possibilities, like nine of them, Yeah. each time I just, I gave up on it because it, the visual would be really nice, but the tree would be huge. Yeah. So. You know what else I could throw out there for why you would multiply them is actually, um, if you think about probability, we can write them as a fraction. We can also represent them as a percentage. Mm -hmm. And that, if you're a little bit better with percentages and fractions, this might make a little bit more sense that you have a 33.3% chance of the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have a 25% chance of that 33% chance. Yeah. Right? Okay. So you could think of it like that, like anytime you're trying to find a percentage of something, mm -hmm. you multiply by that percentage as a decimal. I like that. Uh, so maybe if you're thinking 33%, what's 25% of that? We have to multiply. It's the same idea there. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I like that explanation. That's a good one. Yeah, Thanks. visually, I could show you why it is multiplication um, with the probability tree, but um, yeah, it gets pretty. It does. Pretty. <laughs> Without like a, a simple probability, it's going to be a right. lot, a big tree. Right. Really. Very yeah. true. Good job. Very nice explanation. Thanks.